Welcome to the MuseCast, where we squeeze every last drop of inspiration out of Sunday's sermon. All right, we got double fingers, a little lean back. We are ready to go. Um, It will be a choose your own adventure, I feel like, with you every week, Dan, because you guys are out of the state, um, being someplace healthier for you during the winter. And so that means a lot of times, like, where we where we see you and your background can change so it'll be interesting every wow. week to see you know it's going to be pretty similar for two months until the end of okay. february so there was a couple years ago where we had to hop around just because that's how it worked out but uh this year we're, we're going to be here until okay until the beginning of march so okay. i remember one time in previous years um you were at a coffee shop a couple of times yeah. down while you guys were down in florida and that was always fun to see rando people yeah. walking by or cars honking and stuff so it's, it's fun it's a choose yeah. your own adventure fun is one way to put it that's <laughs> indeed all right well i know that i experienced something last night dan that you did not and that's because you are down in the sunshine state and i am not and we had you know another weather situation and my kid um had a lesson a a music lesson last night and just north of town and we got a frantic call that he was in the ditch so he he just couldn't yeah he was and he's not like a reckless or fast driver at all and he just could not stop and i mean he was doing everything he could to stop and the car just kept going and it was Mm. like down this like um like deep ditch so he was wow. terrified so i'm terrified like trying to get to him because like i said he was mm. north of town and you know on a back road anyway and then and the toe came and like you know pulled him right out got so him out good but yeah he's okay but, yeah he's okay no injuries but he was just a little freaked out because he had never had anything like that before so yeah. ugh. Mm. but you didn't go through any of that dan because no you know you're you know, just we- chilling yeah, we're, we're we uh it was a little cold here this weekend. Um not you know relative to you it wasn't, but uh uh I will say this though about the ditch <laughs> as you <laughs> shake your head disapprovingly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I I will say this about the ditches, you know, I, I grew up in uh you know on farms and stuff and it's like mm-hmm. you know half the time we were driving in the ditch just because that was the quickest way to get to where we're going and so you know it's like if I go in the ditch in the winter time it's like oh, okay well my car was here but now it's down there so I just need help getting it out and and uh it, no no shame in going in the ditch that's what the ditch yeah, is for that's what it's there, there for yes, it's there to, to catch you that's right when you <laughs> yeah, the ditch is the city planner's version of Jesus just that's waiting right. there to catch you when you fall <laughs> yes See, folks, that's why you turn into the tune into the MuseCast is because you're going to learn all these interesting things. And it always right. goes back to Jesus and the kingdom. That's, that's every right. single time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a cruciform traffic philosophy right there. That's what that is. Yep. That's right. That's right. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, everyone. It is Tuesday. We're glad to be here with you. Continuing the conversation from Sunday Sermon, MLK. Um, hope in action. We were here in the States. It's a holiday on uh, yesterday, which is great. And so a lot of inspiring different elements in the sermon. And then we got to see Greg. He was back. We yeah. weren't sure, but he was back. So that's yeah. good. And um, Dan, you've got a sermon for us and we'll have yep. a little discussion and some nuggets and then call it good. Yeah, sounds good. Well, uh, first of all, it was very nice of Greg to show up and just to I give know. you and me a break. We need you know? a break. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the other thing I would say is, man, I I loved. I just and I, I, I hope that we can get them on more. But Delon and his dad, just that just. I man, know, I, man. I rock okay. And roll. Okay, so you know this because you've been around um, Delon and his dad, the Mighty Revivals, when they've played before. And so, like traditional gospel music, it's not like we're going to go three verses in the chorus. And like, it's kind of like you feel it. You like, you feel it out, you know? Uh, And so, but we have a timed service. So they really try, they work hard to like accommodate our schedule. And so, in in the run through that morning, 
the whole deal was is that long that last song long long journey which i saw you in the chat say oh i'm gonna have this song in my head for a while <laughs> yeah. um we knew because that could go on but we knew like the, the signal for me to come up at the end was when pop the dylan's dad goes back to his chair and sits down and, and plays his guitar and so that was like that's how we rehearsed it and then i tell you i kid you not while we're in the service <laughs> And they're doing the song and then Pop goes to sit down. So I go up, I start to go up because it's like, it could be like when they're done, it's an abrupt done. So I'm going to run up and then Dylan's like, again. And so literally Dan, I'm like dancing my way back down the stairs. <laughs> you know, I like, saw you at the top of the stairs and I thought, <laughs> I thought she's so moved by this song. She's going to get up there and just start <laughs> dancing with everybody. And that's what I was hoping for. So, yeah. So, yeah, it was like, Mary, like I was called on because we had the, the, what we thought was like the, you know, the signal. Yeah. And then, and then when we realized it's not Mary's like, oh, God, yeah. and so literally all I could do was like dance backwards. Like it was all a part of it. Yeah. And then just stand there at the bottom of the stairs. So, yeah. You know, you. Uh, the the Mighty Revivals, um, they're sort of a jazzy blues thing. And uh, Mary is not about jazz. Mary no. is more about Baroque. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, yes. it, it's got to be, this is when this is done. This is when this is done. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yep. so, you know, hats off to her for stepping out of her comfort zone to to accommodate that because it was fantastic. So, uh, so and good. then Greg. So good. Yeah. And then Greg. Yeah. Uh, Kind of talked about MLK and he he focused on uh, Dr. King's letter from a Birmingham jail, and um, and he just look he looked at just kind of undergirding King's writing and basically the letter from a Birmingham jail. Uh, King is arrested, he's in jail, and these I think seven or eight Presbyterian ministers kind of teamed up to write this letter, basically trying to uh, convince the the um, social justice movement that King had sort of spearheaded to just be rational and reasonable and slow down and, and, and so forth. And, and he, it was just this very sort of uh, milk toast sort of response to the things that, that Dr. King was doing. And so King responded by writing this letter in response to them where he, he basically just challenged them and he expressed his disappointment in the white church and, um, and kind of undergirding all of King's, kind of uh, perspective was this emphasis on the centrality of reconciliation in the Bible and uh, in the gospel. And so Greg really sort of uh, hammered on that, showing how like since Abraham, uh, since pretty much the beginning of the Bible, God's ultimate vision was to have this uh, kingdom, uh, this this community of worshipers who who were made up of all of the nations and so it had this beautiful diversity within it and um and then greg goes and takes it a step further and says that look you know because israel was kind of uh given this call to be sort of um uh this light of god for all the other nations uh Jesus is sort of the embodiment of that Israel. And so Jesus, as the embodiment of this Israel, uh, on the cross, he, uh, by dying on the cross, he dies for the whole world. He dies as a service to the whole world. And um, and the goal of this, uh, Paul says in Ephesians, is to, to kind of uh, usher in this new humanity. And in, in Jesus' suffering on the cross and in his death on the cross, uh, Paul tells us that Christ puts to death the hostility that leads to this division. And then uh, the Apostle Paul will, will then go on to talk about how our job is to be ministers of reconciliation. Um, and so, in other words, uh, putting this reconciliation is so intimate to Christ's work on the cross uh, really does make ending racism a part of Christ's work on the cross. Or another way to say that is the atonement or the at one uh, a big part of that is racism. So racism isn't just a social justice issue. It's a central atonement issue. And, um, and so what Greg uh, kind of infers from this is that the church should not be bystanders on this. The, the, the church should be at the front lines of uh, racial reconciliation. Um, and then he goes on to talk about how, uh, you know, in Revelation, the beauty of 
God's victory at the end will be the diversity of of the people who worship together uh, God and um, and it, it's just such a good reminder. And, and Greg has shared a message like this in the past. And it's funny being a white guy how I so easily forget that reconciliation is um, just that integral to atonement itself. And it's so easy for you know, white guy, Dan to think, okay, well, there's the atonement. And then, you know, because I believe in God, I should also care about racial reconciliation. It's like, no, no, no. The racial reconciliation is central to that atonement piece. And if, if you don't see it that way, then you don't have a very robust understanding of atonement to begin with. And, and I just think that's, that's so, so valuable. Uh, what did you think of Greg's sermon? Oh my goodness. I, I loved it. I love our church. I love that we, just dive really full on, head on into um, talking about these issues and, 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 and him talking about the atonement in that way, like reconciliation of all kinds, including racial reconciliation, isn't an add on. It's not like a side to your main meal. Like it is a part of the main meal. It's like, that's, that's the meat and the bones of it. And so I love that we talk about that. There was, um, Two things that I, uh, you know, me and my notes, I I put a star by. One was um, the essential call, which is just what you're talking about right now. The essential call of the church is to manifest everything Jesus died for. And um, reconciliation of all people is like, it's like right there. That's a, that is like a big part of what Jesus died for. And I don't know that I have heard it talked about in that way that explicitly before like this what this is it like you always hear it's so individualized jesus died for our sins well guess what yes our sins and also the sins of the world um and and part of the sins of the world is that that divide you know yeah. that um that disunity and so yeah reconciliation yeah. is at the forefront of that and then greg even said that it is heresy to not talk about reconciliation like yeah. if you're not if you're not preaching that in your churches then that's that's heresy just like if you're not preaching yeah. about sin you know and and you know why jesus came um that that's heresy so that's right um it'll be interesting to see uh comments that come through but mm -hmm. up to this point it's been very positive and people affirming what they heard and and so that's why i say i'm so proud to be a part of woodland because we do have a diverse uh body of people both um working there but also a part of it and our volunteers and our folks locally and non-locally and i just think that's beautiful and people really do seem to have this vision and it seems to inspire folks like you um when mm -hmm. you said you know you hear this and you've heard this, but, and yet you're still like, you know, you, yeah. you're inspired by it. You're, you're not oh. sick of it. And I just think that's so yeah. powerful. Absolutely. You know, what really uh, helps Shauna for me is that, yeah. you know, <laughs> we live in, in such a, a, a fractured and hostile mm -hmm. sort of culture right now. And so I feel like there's a lot of people who are ready to pounce on things that they disagree with or, th or they think is wrong. And right. uh, especially churches, you know, you, people who, oh, you think you represent God? Well, blah, 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 blah. And they, they're just ready to pounce. And it is so, um, I don't know, encouraging and um, just uh, it fills my heart when people uh, say, hey, this you're, you're doing this right. This you're doing this really well, and I appreciate this. And and we did get get a comment on Greg's sermon uh, from Harry, who just talked about how uh, how heartwarming it is to see yeah. a church, uh, especially a church with a, a lot of people who are white in leadership, kind of speak to some of these things. And man, it feels good to say, okay, well, at least to to Harry, we're doing something right, and that that. That that is so encouraging, and I appreciate that so much. Yeah, absolutely. I remember back um, for us because it was so close to home here in the Twin Cities in 2020 with the George Floyd murder, and how long? Like we, I think we had maybe started a, new, a series mm -hmm. and then scrapped that because we yeah. just dove into this race conciliation conversation mm -hmm. that took several weeks. Um, and for the most part, that was really well received, but there were those that were like, I'm not here for this woke agenda. And that made right. me sad. That made me yeah. really sad because I think Greg showed us, um, and I think scripture shows us. And I think, um, 
you know, the character of Jesus absolutely shows us that it's not, it's not a woke agenda. It's, it's Hmm. part of Jesus's agenda. It is, you know, it, it is, it is his. And so I love the, the exercise at the end, the meditation that uh, Greg took us through. And the thing that kept standing out to me, um, especially from those verses in Revelation, as we were like, as he led us to kind of envision that future, um, when all will be reconciled and everything that is not of him is burned away. Like, and, 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 and okay, those verses in Revelation it talks about every tribe and every tongue. And so, yes, that speaks to diversity, but it also like, to me, I just envision, and this, I don't know if this is right or wrong, because guess what? I'm not in heaven yet, but, um, <laughs> um yeah, you're but in still water. I, I know which, it's easy to confuse the two. I no, know it's kind of yeah. close, kind of close, <laughs> yeah. but, um, when I, that every tongue part, like that to me speaks of diversity of language and guess what? That's going to be a part of it. So, that's just the beauty of like, we're not all gonna, we don't all speak the same language now. And I don't know that that's going to magically change when we're in heaven, but the, just the beauty of that diversity, but like in any language, it's still worshiping mm-hmm. God, you know, and, and bringing yeah. honor to the lamb. And so I just, that picture was just really cool. I really appreciated that. And I am all for, and I love, um, that Dr. King wrote about it in the letter. You know, I am all for like envisioning that future, but doing everything we can to bring that to pass now. Yeah. And the last thing I will say um, in regards to the letter is it is as if he wrote that in 2023. Right. Honestly. Yeah. And yeah. so like, you know, it, it doesn't feel, yes, progress has been made. I'm not going to say it hasn't, but but, 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 you know, um, there is still much progress to be made and it is, he could have literally written that letter in this yep. year. And that's the part that just like, oh, come on, when are we going to really get this revelation? Yeah. yeah I, you know, I, I, I think the language thing, I mean, language really is about understanding one another and that's kind of the vehicle that we use to, to understand one another. And, and it's easy to get discouraged with um, the fact that we still have so many racial issues in, in this country. And, and you, and you're right, reading the letter from a Birmingham jail, it's a, he could have written that today. And that is um, that is discouraging. On the other hand, um, you know, I, I look at like we have this ministry of reconciliation, and the challenge of reconciliation is going to be relative to um, the size of the uh, fracture. And mm. man, when you look at America mm. between uh, you know American whites and American blacks, that is a massive, massive fracture. Not only is it a massive fracture, but it's not a ma- it's not a fracture. Like, you know, the Irish Civil War where they had the Protestants and the Catholics because the Protestants and the Catholics, they were very they, – they, they, they were that, – that Civil War came from the same culture. But like in America, you have like really radically different cultures forced together in this horrifically violent, oppressive situation where one side totally um, oppresses the other and, and just uh, mocks their humanity for hundreds of years. And then through the work of social justice uh, warriors, basically, and, and you know, through the self-sacrifice of so many black people and through the work of, of some white people as well, now you have like this uh, legal equality, but man, you still have some really profoundly deep fractures under there that's going to have reverberations and echoes and 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 there's just a lot there to reconcile. It's not the reconciliation is not just a legal reconciliation. Right. The reconcili- it's not enough to free the slaves, especially as we've seen for a lot of black people, after they were freed, things got actually worse with uh, the the legal changes that were made in, in the South. And and so I guess um, when I read Dr. King, there is this sense in which, you know, love is patient. And this is, you know, the history bends towards just, justice. And, and I love the fact that he's so ferociously uh, persistent uh, toward this vision that he has uh, without being naive to you know, how, how long this is going to take. Um, but I mean, it, but still ferociously persistent at it. Whereas I think uh, the temptation for white people is to say, well, this is a, a long process and we need to slow down. Yeah. 
and King kind of says, this is a long process and we need to speed up, right. <laughs> you know? And so, so I, I just, I appreciate all of that. And, and thinking of, of the issues in that way kind of helps with some of my discouragement and, and mm-hmm. while at the same time motivating me, because, you know, we have, we have deep, deep fractures to reconcile and my charge, my call from God is to be a minister of reconciliation. And so it really does a good job of, of putting prioritizing my spiritual task lists and mm-hmm. and to prioritize my my focus uh spiritually as as it pertains to uh our collective body of Christ and mm-hmm. um and maybe to the best of our ability the rest of the world um so it, just some thoughts on that yeah um that brings up a question and and um hopefully it's not too personal but um, it's a two-part question. One, like how, when you hear that you are a minister of reconciliation and Dr. King taught that and Lord knows um, that's what we see in Jesus's teachings. And that's something we've been talking about, you know, not just this past weekend, but for a while at Woodland Hills. Um, and and that lands with you, Dan. Why Why does that land with you without bristle you know why do you feel like you you are at a place to be able to accept and receive that and then the second part of my question is then why have like historically why have so many i'm going to say white churches not to bash on them but how, why have so many white churches or white believers not um taken up that mantle of of seeing themselves as ministers of reconciliation yeah um I don't know. I can't speak for, I guess I, I guess I don't really know I, I, my speculation mm-hmm. in, in just from my own experience in white churches is that I think that, um, love is tends to be sentimentalized. That is mm-hmm. love has to do with a feeling. And, um, and so there's this sense in which if I love black people in my heart, that's, then I'm not racist. And, right. um, and I think that that's, uh, you know, so it could be a naive view of, of love that, that, uh, uh, participates in this kind of failure. Um, I think that the fear is another one. I think that there's a lot of, um, w- you know, white people who are, are just afraid of, of other cultures and, um, and there is sort of a, a white coddling uh, where we've been in power. We've, you know, like I can walk through a city and not feel uncomfortable ever, you know, whereas black people walk down the same city and, and they're always like looking behind every corner, seeing how people are looking at them, stuff like that. And, and I just don't know that because I've just had this comfort where I can go anywhere I want, whenever I want without consequence. And there is, there isn't this, uh, threat. There isn't this onus. There isn't this urgency, uh, to, to fix society because society is great. I can do whatever I want here. This is, this is the land of the free. Well, for me, it is, you know, but that's not the case for other people. And, and it's really hard to recognize that my experience, just doing something simple, like walking through a a city and even a city that I've never been to before, you know, uh, we, we can all walk through our own city because we know the, the shady areas or whatever, and we have a familiarity with stuff, but I can go to any city in America and I can walk around and not be worried because I'm white. Uh, and I know that, that black people can't do that. And it's hard for white people to understand little nuanced perspective shifts like that. Um, and I think for me, um, I'm, I have so far to go on this and I realize how far I have to go, uh, every time I read a new book or, or, Mm. you know, get to know somebody new, but it helps, you know, reading books, uh, really does help to understand, okay, not everyone experiences America the way I do. And, Mm. uh, and so, you know, reading James Cone and reading, Mm -hmm. um, uh, right. And reading, um, you know, even Oshita's book was fantastic. And just seeing all of these nuanced perspectives is just, it's so eye opening. And, Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, so I don't know if that answers the question, but it it was a lot of talking. We filled some time. We did fill some time. No, you talked about how personally you've gotten to where you are, you know, through education, which was one of Greg's and the MLK team's um, action points is like to educate yourself. And I think that's good. Also, Dan, I think your heart is open. Um, and 
to the possibility of there's an experience that's not your experience. There's a truth that hasn't been your lived truth and that doesn't make it unreal, you know? And so not everyone is that way. So I say, that's something I see. Um, and I think that maybe lends to your, your posture of being willing to learn. And, and that is something that I challenge myself with regularly. And I want to challenge others with is just because your lived experience isn't a certain way um, or a certain thing or certain experience doesn't mean that there that someone else's lived experience isn't true. Like, right. Yep. You may not understand it or have experienced it, but it doesn't make it any less true than what you know. And um, yes, this weekend was about MLK, but Greg did also say like when, when we are called to tear down those walls of hostility, yes, race is absolutely at the forefront, but there are a lot of other areas of division and, and, and places in which we have built up these walls of, of hostility that we need to be about tearing down. And I was yeah. thinking about your example, Dan, about your, your the freedom you feel as a white man, I will, I will add the part man yeah. to walk around because you know what, women don't have that same experience. And of course, yeah. people of color don't have that same experience. And and uh, folks in the queer community don't have that same experience. So any kind of marginalized group, they their lived experience is very different and not as freeing. And I do think a lot of people have fear built up for whatever reason. And that fear is just like causing this, you know, hostility toward one another. And yeah. that is something as believers, we are called to be a part of tearing down. And I love right. that mandate. I just think it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, I, I to add to that, um, I, I, was, I was thinking this is part of the reason why King was so brilliant because he talked about, you know, I have a dream. And he basically paints a picture of God's dream from Revelation and from the yeah. prophets and so forth. And and what that does is that it gives me a template, like a what's it called? Like a, a chalk line through which I can, I can compare okay, how are things actually going relative to God's dream for humanity? Mm. And you look around, you're like, okay, <laughs> it's not going well. Uh, right. there, even though there are there are uh, anecdotes, there are exceptions, there's still a lot of hostility in America, at least, between uh, white people and black people. And um, and guess what? The, the problem doesn't lie with the dream. The dream is solid. The, that's That's what God is going to accomplish. So the flaw or what's broken here is us. <laughs> yeah. And so we still have work to do, you know, and, um, and, and, you know, I, I, I think that's, I think that's what it is. I think it's work. I think it's, I think it's reading books by people that, that uh, from other cultures, it's, it's, it's not necessarily like, you know, you know, you, I'm not going to become black. Uh, there's nothing wrong with my white culture, yeah. but we have to, we have to, you know, get along. We have to reconcile with other cultures. So you have to learn about them. You have to, you know, get in, in touch with their perspective as much as possible. And, and there's probably other work that needs to be, on, be done too. There, there needs to be more confession. There needs to be more uh, repentance. There needs to be things like that, that, that's sort of the mm -hmm. core of redeeming relationships. And, um, and, but to get to those more, I think, high leverage spiritual things, we first need to just become familiar with one another and feel safe around one another and to have trust toward one another. One of the challenges that I see now is, um, you know, with, with, uh, white people is that, you know, a black person will say something like, uh, Hey, uh, you know, I feel like police are, um, are, are not treating my people fairly and white people will come with a whole bunch of statistics mm -hmm. and, um, and what that does is that that says that I don't trust you. I trust data. And yeah. and and the data might be on your side on this, but you're still showing a lack of trust in the black person who's making this confession. And and so I guess for me, what I would hope to see is I would hope to see us develop more trust toward one another, which means that giving people the benefit of the doubt, uh, listening uh, uh, from both sides, you know, be, getting better at listening, getting better at being earnest and, uh, you know, in, are, are we moving toward a goal together mm -hmm. and having that shared vision, uh, you know, and I think Dr. King's is uh, the right one and Amen. that we should move toward. So those are some other thoughts on it yeah. too, that I've been kicking around since I've been listening to Greg's sermon and you know, it's weird too, because we, we do a sermon for MLK and, and, um, and there is a temp, there is a, uh, a, a risk of, 
you know, only focusing on racial stuff once a year. Um, I'm very proud that we tend to focus on it throughout the year. Uh, mm-hmm. But that being said, it, it is a good reminder to do the hyper focus on MLK. Mm-hmm. And um, I know it, it helps me a lot. So mm-hmm. two things in response to what you just said. One, I love and I and I love that Greg brought this up in the sermon that it was uh, Sister Jackson who who said to King, hey, tell him your dream. Like, how yeah. cool is that? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it takes a community to come together to like do these inspiring things. And yeah, we focus on on the man. Of, and I under, understand that. Um, but he had people who were like, hey, just tell, and I love that it was a woman. She was like, tell him the dream, Martin, tell yeah. him about your dream. Um, and my second thing was, oh, yes, you were talking about the trust. Um, I think that is so key. And But we're not going to get there until we actually um, close the gap of proximity. Like we need to get get within proximity of people who are different yeah. than us. We have to engage folks. We have to be in relationship. We have to be curious about other people and other cultures. We need to, like, like I was saying that I've seen you do, You, we have to be curious about, oh, this is something I'm unfamiliar with, something I don't know about. Tell me about that. Yeah. Tell me, tell me your story. Tell me who you're, tell me about your, like, we need to be curious, not in condescending ways, not in, right. you know, weirdo, you know, ways. <laughs> come on but in genuine like curious ways and that's how we gain trust and that's how we learn from one another instead of just relying on something we think we know or some statistic yeah. told us we got to get that proximity um yeah get that closer amen. Amen. amen um do you have another thought i mean do you I have do. another thought <laughs> Do you have a pre-nugget thought or do you have a nugget? I have a nugget. Uh, Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, well, I'm excited to hear your nugget because you told me at the very beginning that you had a nugget. So I'm going to let you- We didn't have anything else. I didn't have anything else. And all of that was just sort of, maybe, I don't know how sensical it was, but uh, that was all kind of spontaneous. But, you know, just for my nugget, uh, I just, I I keep coming back to, uh, in my mind, we don't have a lot of miracles, you know, mm. like when Jesus mm. walked around and, you know, healed people and so forth. But in my mind, the closest thing to a miracle that I've seen in my life is, in my opinion, is the black church. Because mm. you have this, <laughs> you've got these people who were pulled from their homeland by this very yeah. different, very patronizing, very violent uh, society from from Europe and and they enslaved you and they had this religion which seemed to be justifying all of these behaviors and yet somehow uh as a black person who was pulled into this other country and oppressed by these white people and their violence justifying religion somehow you were able to see through that violence and through those justifications and you were able to find Jesus in all of that and in finding that 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 treasure in the midst of this chaotic violent darkness you were able to still your hearts and you you were able to um uh, kind of persevere through the horrendous mistreatment for a long time and develop this very robust spiritual community in the face of all of this and then even after even after you 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 were freed legally you still faced a uh, horrific kind of racial laws and jim crow laws and so on and so forth and and uh, uh lynchings and and all of that and the dominant faith was christianity in the culture but it was it was white christianity and it was very different than the the christianity that that you had developed in in that sort of um history that you had as an oppressed people and in spite of all of that you were able to grow just this incredible uh christ-centered faith and and Mm -hmm. so the black church to me is just it is such a miracle and the only thing that i look forward to is the even greater miracle when uh the black church and the white church worship together in a Mm -hmm. reconciled church and man it's um it's it's going to be beautiful and Mm -hmm. and and the lead uh it's the black church that takes the lead on on that and um and it's uh i think it's so god 
that um, <laughs> you know the the least of these are going to be great, and the the, the people who were treated the worst will end up, I think, um, leading uh, us into I think the next great sort of phase of the Christian church and and toward Christian reconciliation and toward our this this vision of reconciliation that Dr. King and the Apostle Paul and you know, the apostle John all had for us. And um, mm. so it's not really a nugget. It's more of it a, a celebration of the black church and um, an anticipation of what the black and the white church is going to do together. Mm. That was good, Dan. Um, really beautiful. I love the picture that you painted there. Uh, my nugget will just be a, a an encouragement as well. Um you know, yes, throughout the weekend, and especially yesterday, all over social media, there are various people posting various quotes of Dr. King's. And one of the popular ones that I love is, you know, darkness doesn't drive out darkness, you know, um, and that is so true. And so if we are to take up this mantle of being ministers of reconciliation and tearing down walls of hostility, we can't do it in the way in which the enemy operates like darkness doesn't drive out darkness we have to be light bearers we have to be love bearers we have to do this differently and that it can be difficult and that was one of the things that was so um, inspiring about dr king is his call to peace and his call to laying down um his arms right and 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 it was horrific some of the stuff those folks you know encountered just to be seen as you know, equal. And um, so I just encourage us to be mindful and be prayerful about how we carry ourselves in this fight. And um, sp yes, speak up and let the Lord lead you in what to say and when to say it. Um, but also let's not return hostility for hostility and anger for anger. Um, now there is that righteous anger, of course, but um I just think we need to be be those that are leading with love and showing showing mm -hmm. the way. And and for those who have felt that oppression, um, God has the grace to meet you right where you are and to lead you through this process, you know, in amazing and beautiful ways. And Dan's nugget was just a testimony to that. Like the black church has always, you know, some of those hymnals and and Negro spirituals are or, you know, were crafted in the midst of, you know, the slave field and, and it's, and it's powerful. It, Jesus is mm -hmm. powerful and he breaks through all of the muckety muck in just tremendous ways. And so, um, again, another rambling thought, I don't know if it's quite a <laughs> nugget, but that's what we got yeah. for today, Dan, that's that, right. that those are our nuggets for the day. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys for tuning in and joining us. Thank you for chatting and for your engagement. Thanks for just being a part of this community and this body and, and going on this journey with us. Thank you for being ministers of rec reconciliation with us. It's, it's really beautiful and it's awesome to be a part of. Um, we've got more to come. So don't forget to tune in during the weekend services and circle back with Dan and I every week. We will be here and then we'll be chatting with you um, when the show airs at 4 p.m. Remember, you can send in questions. The, the email will be um, listed below. And if you can't watch us, which I know it's your preference, you can listen to us via podcast wherever you tune into your podcast. So make sure you do that. So that's all we've got for today. Have a great I'm sure, week, everyone. I'm sure this, this all helps. That's it. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, this right. and that <laughs> and this. You know? <laughs> all right. We, See you we next got week. it all covered. See you all next week. <laughs>